So everything is going to be kind of managed centrally over here. So any security related code or configuration that you do for UI, API and data access is going to be kind of common and you know deployed to a single server. So kind of the management of your code and also the cross cutting concerns become easy in terms of uh, like another you know, tightly coupled architecture like monolithic architecture. Similarly, similar to monolithic architecture, we also have something called as NTR architecture. So what is a NTR architecture is? Let's just understand from the name itself, NTR architecture, right? So what does a NTR architecture mean? So basically what we do in our NTR architecture is we just break our application into logical layers and physical layers. Okay. So for example, let's take a simple example so assume that you know i have a application and you know i'll just uh, take two common examples so in industry usually we have either two tier architecture or three tier architecture so if you take a two tier architecture normally what happens is you have this ui or the front end part of you the web pa application part of your code okay so that is one module and there will be a server module or the api module which is kind of going to handle all your business logic and uh, other transformation and server related aspects both of these is going to be kind of bundled together in a server and there will be a another layer which is the database layer which will be kind of talking to this application so both of these would be kind of like you know deployed to server as a single module and your database would be sitting in a different server and these are both of these are going to talk to each other why this is also a monolithic application as you can see like you know we are tightly bundling the ui and api together along with the database right so this is kind of like you know a two-tier architecture which is part of a entire architecture setup right Similarly, for a three-tier architecture, what happens is we have three layers. So one is UI, we will be deploying UI to the UI web server. We will have the API or the web services which will be deployed to the web service, the API server. And finally, we will have the database which will be deployed to the database server, right? So since we have three different layer over here, one is called the presentation layer. The second is called the application layer. The third is called the data layer, right? So if you just go back and uh, like, you know, summarize what we learned earlier, how the application works. So we uh, said, right, an application will have a UI, it will have a API or the web services and also it will have database. So this three tier just tries to logically split our application to these three logical layers. Okay. So and similarly, you can also have other tier architecture as well. So if you want, like based on your uh, setup, if you think that, you don't know, no, I need a four, four tier architecture where maybe Maybe I will also split this application into two part. One could be my core app and the set, second could be like, you know, any third party integration, so on and so forth. So all these are kind of various approaches on how you can tackle entire architecture. So again, in the entire architecture, in terms of management of your code, it becomes slightly difficult because like, you know, you have now multiple layers of the code to manage. But however, in the long term, in terms of management of your code or maintenance of your code, this becomes easy because you kind of now have separate layers operating from separate servers. So kind of the maintenance of the code becomes easy down the line. So the next architecture which we are going to discuss is the loosely coupled architecture. So what is a loosely coupled architecture is? So an example for that would be SOA or event driven architecture. So what this means is here in this architecture, we are not going to kind of tightly bind each of our modules to one another, but rather we are going to have them loosely coupled. So what does the word loosely coupled means is as much as possible, say I have two modules, right? Or two components of an application. I will try to bind them in them in such a way they are least dependent on each other right they are not strongly dependent but they are least dependent meaning if say like you know there are uh, 10 things in my application component one and there are 10 things in my component two if i kind of modify four of these comp uh, uh, like you know data in my component one this is still not going to affect my component two maybe this component two only depends on the sixth and the seventh kind of like you know the output of my component one which i'm not touching so that is kind of an example of a loosely coupled architecture where two services or two components depend on each other but they have minimal dependencies okay an example of this is sova and event driven architecture so what happens in a sova architecture is sova the full form of sova or sova is service oriented architecture so I'll just give you a high level understanding of what is sova so this is kind of not no longer used in industry all these are kind of outdated now after the invention of rest apis but it's always good to know that, you know, what are the various architectures are involved. So what happens in a SOA architecture is there are a few service 
consumer. A consumer is nothing but a person like you and me, or maybe a another application as well, which is going to talk with our application, right? So here you would have our services, okay? So services or APIs. So what is that is? So what happens is you will have a ton of different services which are kind of exposed, okay? So just imagine that you know you are going to kind of build application for your company. So obviously in your company you will have multiple departments. So like you know you will have HR, you will have finance, you will have marketing, you will have sales, you will have software development, you will have like you know order and purchases, so on and so forth. So each of these department would have or expose its own services. But what happens is instead of directly giving them to the consumer, we will have something in between which is called as a service bus. Okay. So the work of the service bus is to kind of act as an interface between your consumer and the services with which it is trying to interface. Okay. So what is the advantage of service oriented architecture is as much as possible, we are trying to reduce the dependencies between the services and also like, you know, the kind of like, you know, dependencies which, which it will have with each other. Okay. So there will be only minimal dependencies. And what happens is all these kinds of acts on a contract. So what happens is if a consumer is trying to consume a service, right? So they will have a contract. The consumer will expect like, you know, will be sending a request in a particular XML format to the server and the server will be responding back to the consumer in a particular XML format. So as long as uh, this particular format is not violated, everything here would be working fine. Okay. So before the advent of REST and microservice architecture, SOA was kind of the de facto enterprise standard which were used earlier for developing enterprise applications. The next architecture which we have in this series uh, like you know of uh, loosely coupled is also called as event driven architecture. So what happens in a event driven architecture is this architecture as the name suggests it works on events. Okay. So I'll just give you a very high level example just to like you know make you understand how it works okay so just assume that you know you have an uh, just take an example of maybe your stockbroking application right or maybe your life score application what happens here so whenever there is a raise in price of the stock or like you know when a batsman hits a ball for some run hits some runs in a ball it triggers an event in your system and that event ensures that you know that data is getting updated in the database right and it then it gets processed and gets shown on the ui on a high level this is what an event driven architecture is all about an event like any external event will be triggering a series of transformations in your application and based on that input the data will be processed okay so here also what happens is you have different components in place each doing its own work so here also it is kind of loosely coupled where like you know they are not strictly coupled or tightly bound with each other each can be each of these can be deployed in its own server and have its own interfaces and all but uh, they all expe are expected to like you know interact uh, following certain standards and that is why it is called as loosely coupled okay the last architecture which we are going to discuss is decoupled okay this is not really a strict term because sometimes decoupled and loosely coupled are kind of like you no know, interchangeably used okay so what happens so what happens in a decoupled system is you can have a bunch of services which are developed okay so when i mean services what i mean so assume that you know you have an application which you're going to write for say the hr department of your company right or maybe you're de developing an application for your entire company. So each of this service can be a service for that particular department. One can be of HR, one can be of marketing, one can be of like, you know, sales, so on and so forth. We'll also see how we have to kind of make the services down the line. We, we, where we will discuss what are the best practices and how many services we should develop and how each of the service should function. Okay. So that is a separate discussion altogether. But for now, just understand that, you know, you can have a ton of different services and each of this service will have it own infrastructure meaning it will have its own api service it will have its own database okay this will have its own api service it will have its own database this will have its own service own api service and it is it will have its own database so on and so forth so each of these microservices would be deployed as a separate module either in the same server or in a different server that is up to the architect who is designing the system but the logic is each of these services would be independent of each other okay even the databases are separate so in this case what happens is even if 
if there is a change in one of the service, the rest of the services will not be affected. And similarly, if we have to upgrade one of these services, say, say tomorrow in the HR department, there is a major change and you know we want to kind of add new functionality. This can be done independently and this can be deployed independently of other services. Whereas if you take the case of monolithic, what happens is, is all the three codes are kind of tightly bound to each other. Even if you have to update a small part of one up, one part of the application, the entire application has to be redeployed and you know updated and all that stuff. But whereas over here, even one single part of the service can also be updated and independently deployed. So that is the beauty of decoupled architecture. And the prime example for this is microservice architecture, okay, which is the focus of our course. So quickly, just to summarize, like what we have learned so far, we saw that, you know, we have tightly bound a uh, tightly coupled architecture we have loosely coupled architecture and we have decoupled architecture right and uh, we also saw that you know in tightly coupled we saw what is a monolithic architecture what is a ntr architecture in loosely coupled we saw what is sova service oriented architecture and event driven architecture and finally for decoupled architecture we saw what is a microservice so if conceptually i have to just draw a diagram for microservice how it will be is so assume that you know this is my UI layer or my client who is consuming my application. So always remember that, you know, one more thing is it is not always necessary that, you know, the API has to talk with UI. It can also be possible that your application can interface with another application as well. So say, for example, when you book a flight ticket, right? So when you go to any of these uh, sites like Make My Trip, Clear Trip, or booking.com or any of those site what happens is these site right when you enter their ui and enter the data it will be going to their api server but from this api server internally it will also make a call to the api server of the particular airlines right so say for example i'm booking a flight from say uh, delhi to mumbai so what happens is this make my trip or any of these uh, travel agent uh, website will be making internally making an api call to say air india or indigo server and fetching that detail and then showing it back to you right so what i'm trying to say is so in this case uh, for the air india or the indigo airlines there is no ui involved here right so all it has is it has a, a api layer and it has a database layer and the consumer or the client for this particular system is nothing but your make my trip api server right so this is what i mean that you know it can either be a ui or can a, can be a cl another client api as well so, so if again just proceeding with our discussion so if i have to kind of like you know draw a conceptual diagram of my api architecture so what happens is there could be a consumer or client which can be ui or api it will make a call to my api gateway okay and from this gateway based on the request which is coming in it will be routed to one of the microservices which will have its own database and all of these are kind of separated from one another as i said they are all independently deployed so what happens is even if there is some changes which i have to make to service one i can do that independently without touching service two three or four okay and again there can be some cross-cutting concerns like as i said security and all that stuff so which can be kind of managed as a horizontal part okay don't worry we'll be discussing microservices in detail uh, in the oncoming uh, chapters so that was pretty much all about microservice for now so with that we have reached to the end of this first part of the session let's meet in the second part now thank you